So today we're going to be installing a Members Mark two-piece toilet. And I'll bet you have it done in about 30 minutes. It's pretty darn simple. This is an efficient toilet and I actually have one in the other bathroom that I've had for over seven years. I really like the toilet a great deal. It includes everything you need to install it without the tools, of course. But I'm going to show you how to make this super simple, super quick. Maybe you're not the type that's ever done this before, but I'm here to tell you if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. I'm going to give you this step-by-step -step how to install the Members Mark high efficiency dual flush toilet in your restroom. After watching this video, you're going to feel like you're number one in a number two business without even ever doing it before. And I'm also going to give you some tips that'll save you tons of time and let you not only know how to do this, but why you're doing certain parts of it. If this video is helpful, consider donating down below, joining the channel, because I helped you. Please try to consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, give me them sweet old thumbs up. If my video is helpful at nighttime, put on one of my sweet Clayway playlists, turn that old volume down and let them suckers play from front to back. These videos only pay two tenths of a cent per view. That's not enough to raise a family on. Let's go with this video. This is my other one that I've had in this restroom for over five years now. If you don't raise the seat, you're gonna lose your meat. Located around your toilet, you're gonna find a shutoff valve. We're gonna turn this completely clockwise to turn it off. You can be gentle, but you're gonna feel the pressure and it's gonna stop the water there. Even if your floor is not ceramic tile like this, or if it's vinyl, whatever, it's gonna work exactly the same. You should always have a shutoff like this, but you can go down to the lower portion, like your basement or your crawl space, and you're definitely gonna find a shutoff for the water inside your bathroom. You, This has been code since the 70s, and that's a long freaking time. Your house is really old if you don't have one of these. Now you can use a set of channel locks or a crescent wrench. We're gonna loosen up this nut here. We're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to take off this cap right here, which is gonna expose our nut and bolt. You can do any of this without pants on. Just be careful if you have a ceramic floor and you accidentally touch it, you're gonna shrivel up real quick. So we'll grab this screwdriver, pop up underneath here. Sometimes you can pull these right off with your hand. Get it up underneath there and twist it and it'll pop right off. So these nuts are gonna be 7 16 Turn that counterclockwise. Pretty too much if the nut breaks or it won't come out. Uh, if it doesn't come out, that means you're gonna have to pry it up off the floor because sometimes these get really rusty. They don't wanna come up. If you pry this up off the floor, you're going to break the flange. But I've seen older houses that have different types of flanges where they don't have a plastic one like I do. But that's a pretty old house. Mine was built in the 90s. Going to the other side and doing the exact same procedure. Make sure after you've turned the water off to your toilet, you flush it to try to avoid as much spillage as possible. If you are worried about a great deal of spillage, you can put some towels around the base or suck this out your shop back. This is a hard line right here, and I'm gonna replace it with the flexible line that's included in the kit. Now with the water shut off, all I have to do is turn this counterclockwise what's called a pipe fit means that it graduates and gets larger the further it goes down we also notice right here there's some teflon tape on here usually put teflon tape on threads to make sure they don't leak especially when water is running through them you can also disconnect it from the top just make sure your bowl is empty meaning that you flushed the toilet after you've turned off the water here's is a fixed to a ceramic tile floor like mine, it may be necessary to take the caulking off around here. We can do that, the screwdriver, whatever, and just pretty much peel it away. Get the caulking up. As you work the screwdriver like this, it will raise that caulking up, make it a little bit easier to do. As you're working around there, you make sure you get up underneath there, and every once in a while, you can take your screwdriver, get a little pry, you don't want to damage your tile if you're not replacing it like me. You can also at times pull it out of there as well. Make sure you're staying close to the bottom and not pulling too much. Nope, I broke it. Aesthetically pleasing, caulking around your toilet looks great. The problem is, is that with caulk and tile, you could have a leak from your wax ring underneath here after 10 or 20 years. That caulk will keep it out and rot out the boards underneath the toilet. Something to think about, not anything to really heed any caution for. Every once in a while, maybe every 10 years or so, you wanna check 
and make sure you don't have a wax ring leaking. A lot of times when you're doing this, you're gonna find that your pipes underneath your floor will move a little bit. Be gentle when you do that. You obviously don't wanna break anything underneath the floor that you don't know of if you have one of these hard lines like I do. With the cock removed, it was easy to lift up on the toilet, and now we got a big gap. We can take it up and set it off to the side. These toilets are not very heavy. Generally, one person can handle one. If you tilt the toilet backwards, the water will drain out of the bowl. Make sure you're not like me and actually drain it into the hole. It smells like poo butter down there. Not a fanciful smell. I'd recommend gloves for this, but now we're gonna take some paper towel and we're gonna clean up around where the ring's gonna fit. That's nasty. How come he looks like PETA but sounds like Cleveland? <laughs> now, a lot of times you're just gonna have these fit into the floor and they should slide down done this for a while and you're going to notice that they're oblong like that so when you put them inside here a lot of times you're going to turn them you can turn them counterclockwise or clockwise make sure you get you some big strong virile men to get rid of these old toilets out of here one of these big beef cakey men will take that things right out of there for you Mm-hmm. Thanks, Bam Bams. All the parts necessary to install it are in the box. It's gonna come out in two separate pieces, the tank and the toilet. You should know that just about anything, except for the porcelain, can be repaired on a toilet. So if you have a leak, you don't have to replace it. This is a good alternative because this is a very inexpensive toilet that functions very well and has a long life expectancy. You can put the wax ring over the hole. You want to be careful and don't smush it down too much. You want the weight of the toilet to smush down that wax ring and you want to give it a press once you put it inside there. Before you install your toilet, you need to make sure that you have your bolts into their location and the washer that goes on the top of there installed. Inside your kit, you're going to have these little plastic washers and what they do is they help hold the bolt into place as you put the toilet down on it. So it holds them somewhat secure. You wanna make sure that they're parallel with one another. All you do is put the plastic washer on there and you can push it down until it secures the bolt into somewhat of a proper place. Make sure you slide the bolts all the way into the notches. Put your wax ring into place. If your toilet is not on square, when you go to do it, you can set it down on the wax ring and turn it to where it's necessary make sure that your studs are protruding out the top directly above this right here put pressure to set the wax ring and that will raise your studs up a little bit now you can take your two plastic covers that'll hold your top put that down put your washer down put your nut on now you can tighten up your 7 16 nut you don't have to tighten it up a, a lot more than likely in this situation, you're gonna raise the stud up to where about on the top of the nut here. Make sure you install both nuts before you go to tighten anything down. You might not possibly be able to get the nut started on here because it'll be up too high. Nut in your stud should be approximately like that. It's down in there just a little bit. And to tighten it up, all you really need to do is just put the socket in your fingers. This does not have to be very tight. We'll break the ring down on the bottom of the toilet if you tighten it up too much. Now we can quite simply put the caps on and how they go on is you just pop them on the top of there. Now we're gonna do the Members Mark dual flush upper tank installation. This is very easy as well. Okay, so now we've got this ring that quite simply fits onto the bottom here. On the back side of this, this is notched like the big old nut they have over there. And we can see all we need to do is ensure that it's placed on the PVC properly and looks similar to this. Oh, so these two posts right here are going to fit down in these two holes right here. It don't look like there's any washers or anything that goes in here, so we'll set this on. Now we're gonna take each wing nut and the steel washers and put one on each side. Installing the washer first and then the wing nut. I know you got a little zap from the floor and shriveled up a little bit and now you're probably feeling pretty good, but you do not have to tighten these wing nuts up crazy like Godzilla. Just tighten them finger tight. Make sure your tank doesn't move all crazy. You're not gonna be doing weird stuff on this toilet, I hope, so you don't have to worry about that tank being totally tight. We just don't want it to leak between the two. And if it does leak, you can tighten up the wing nuts a little bit more. Possibly add a little bit of grease around there or some Vaseline jelly that you more than likely have in your bedroom. Does tilt a little bit like this, but doesn't move side to side. It's good to go.
The toilet seat installation is super simple and super easy. Although I've noticed over the years that you do have to go back, reach your hand up underneath here and tighten up nuts. I will also say this is a new toilet. I bought this in December of 22. The toilet seat seems different than the toilet seat on my other one. This one seems a little bit more heavy duty than the other one. The other toilet though was only $60. This one has doubled in price to 120. On each side, you're gonna put one of these grommets and this nut and bolt system. First you insert the plastic grommet, plastic bolt and washer. And you insert everything, put everything together just like this. Rubber grommet, plastic washer, then locking nut. It is best to make sure that your bolts fit down in these little washers right here. It'll keep the toilet seat tight longer. Now we just tighten them up and we're good to go. Number two, can push down on the clips, pop them into place. Bam! These three portions of the kit are adapters for different styles. And if you need to use them, you need to refer to your installation manual. But in my situation, this hose fits right up to my parts. Now, the one thing that I don't have here at the house is some Teflon tape. Highly recommend you pick some of that up, put it around the threads, then you're sure to not have any leaks. Right now, I'm just gonna kind of wing it, see what happens. It really isn't gonna be a problem because it's got these O-rings down inside here and that rubber fitting right there. And as I got that assembled, my wife brought me some Teflon tape. She heard me say I didn't have any. You wanna take six to eight inches, 12 inches of Teflon tape. Can't really mess this up, but the best way to do it is to go clockwise because that's the way you're gonna turn this. And that way, when you go to fit this on here, it doesn't bunch up. If you go counterclockwise, you're gonna bunch up as you turn this. If you tighten the nut down, you don't have to go He-Man on that ass. Make sure you tighten this down, pretty much snugger up. You're nice and solid. Remember that if it leaks, you can tighten it up a little bit more. Now we can put the cap on. Putting the tank cover on is really, really simple. We notice this blue line and this white line, obviously just fit right down onto here. And you just set it down on top. And on our water, let our toilet feel. As it's filling, Put your hand up around here, check for leaks. And when it's done filling, the bowl should have filled as well. The smaller button is a 1.1 gallon flush and the larger button is a 1.6 gallon flush for those super large loads. And it flushes that quick. Don't forget to drop your seat or you'll lose your meat. Man, that was super simple. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the donate button down below. Join the channel so we can help the channel grow. Remember, no matter what it is in life you think you can or cannot do, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next of them. Be the absolute first of you. God bless and have the greatest of days.